exploring the habit of gladness and generosity, it's important to remember again that there will be times when this comes quite naturally and is quite easy, times of joy and celebration. There'll be other times when to be glad and generous is much more challenging, demanding and difficult. It's really important to explore this habit because it shapes so much the kind of world that we want to live in and create and be. If we live in a world that's mean and me-centred, is ungrateful and moaning all of the time, then that just diminishes life. But when we live gladly and generously, everybody is blessed. The assets and the many of the church don't belong to us, they belong to God. The Finance Committee firmly believes that their role is to serve the church and to find the finances that the church needs to do God's work. Andrew Roberts says that generosity is a prophetic and countercultural symbol in a world of avarice and greed. We believe that the m and giving by churches is not just about buying the services of a minister. Andrew Roberts talks about giving with gladness and generosity. That comes from 2 Corinthians 9 to 7, where it says God loves a joyful giver. Stewardship is, is not just about hoarding money and, and saving up as much as we can for a rainy day. And we would want to see congregations giving with, with gladness and generosity um, and not just view it as a financial transaction. In my book, Holy Habits, I share the story from Rwanda of a lady who found the generosity in her heart to forgive the man who had murdered very violently members of her family. I found that story deeply, deeply challenging, not least in the context of many of the churches that have been part of or served, when sadly, very often, our petty differences and bitternesses and disagreements get in the way. Living gladly and generously is a means of grace and forgiveness and freedom. Over the years, I think Commitment for Life has really given churches a chance to understand what is happening in the world. Life-giving faith is about the love that God has given us, but it's also about giving life to others. Defiant Hope is really looking at the structures that keep people poor and doing something about it ourselves. The generous love, that's the giving generously, giving gladly for what we have received from God. Commitment for Life has been a real success within the United Reformed Church over so many years and will continue to do so for many years to come. There are lots and lots of ways in which we can practice the habit of gladness and generosity, both personally and collectively. So collectively, uh, the Food Hub Project, for example, is a great example where Christians go into the supermarkets get with their permission obviously food that's just about it is sell by date and then give that to others the food is free project is another great example food unites us we used to share it we used to grow it together and for some reason we've forgotten how rewarding that can be, and how unifying it can be. When we meet in the garden, all of our differences fall by the wayside. It can seem so daunting these days, you know, when we flip on the TV or, or look at the news headlines, how we can actually make the world a better place. But what we realized in planting these gardens out in our front yard and sharing the harvest with our neighbors is that we've made a real difference in our immediate sphere of influence. We realized that we can build community anywhere, when you focus on your little piece of the world and make a difference there, if we all do that, the world is changed. What started as a front yard garden is now evolving to become a worldwide movement. On every continent, over 190 cities around the world are starting Food is Free projects. We believe in creating a new kind of world, one of possibility, one where we see that you and I are connected, that we're here to help each other and we're in this together where people grow food and give it away. There are no charges involved at all. 
We can do things individually. We can pay for somebody's meal in a restaurant. We can waive a fee that we might otherwise take. Sometimes it's the smallest act can be the means of great blessing to others. So let's be imaginative and creative and let's try and practice this habit on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, and then perhaps make an annual special effort to do something really big and exciting.